Learning a new piece takes discipline, dedication and determination. Motive and reason for learning a new piece, which gives us a sense of purpose. Patience and determination in problem solving. Self-awareness and self-reporting, being always analytical and constructive in our feedback. Chunking and setting goals to support thoroughness and give purpose to tiny details while also giving us opportunities for validation and fulfilment in our learning journey. Self-respect and self-belief which are fundamental in sustaining us through the inevitable challenges in learning a new piece, giving us confidence and commitment through the learning pathway and into the performance, whether shared publicly or privately. Learning a new piece combines meticulous and systematic organisation alongside fulfilment of our combined creative musical expression with that of the composer whose writing is in our hands. In learning a new piece, I think there is sometimes a misunderstanding in what becomes a proficient uh, understanding of a piece, a new piece that we learned. The idea that the less we have to think, the better it is. Um, and this is I will use a very strong word, this is a total delusion. For me, whether it's in the warm-up or whether it's learning a piece and indeed performing a piece, what I am training myself to do is training my brain, my cognitive, that I am thinking enough and appropriately and retrieving the knowledge so that I have the narrative that I need remember that note, that fingering, this particular uh, emphasis on a certain embouchure. Um, these are constant narratives that I'm training myself in the learning of a new piece, that I'm refining the information so that the narrative, that is the narrative of what I'm instructing myself to do while I'm doing it, is absolutely so refined, so organised, so prioritised that I can commit to what I'm doing and have eradicated any of the confusions um, and the conflicts and the doubts which uh, I might have only over a particular note, over a particular fingering, over a particular embouchure or indeed my psychological doubt in terms of producing uh, a certain tone. So to me, it is about cognitive efficiency, which is the ultimate uh, what I'm striving to do in learning a new piece so that the efficiency is there, the narrative is reliable, and therefore it leaves me room also to be creative. Um, and that's the multitaskingness of uh, what we do when we're playing. And that's the extraordinariness, but it's all in the training, the building up, the chunking. <laughs> This is what I often refer to as simulated performance. So we're imagining what's going, what's we're standing in that pressured situation, whether it's the microphone, whether it's uh, standing on the platform, we are testing our learning. And for me, there are sections of this, uh, the starting of the semiquavers. Uh, I was rushing in the rehearsal with Chris, 
So it was really that I had in my mind, and this is always what we carry, the page is our prompt. But what we are actually building is a cryptic set of instructions where what we look on the page gives us the instruction of what we need to do. We're not actually taking in everything that's on the page or even in a bar um, without applying uh, a real rigor of science. Um, I would say as a very approximation, we're actually only reading no more than 50% of the page um, of 50% of any bar um, and sometimes even less. So it's we're really signposting and that's where the learning needs to be incredibly thorough of learning notes, of learning rhythms, of learning phrasing um, and then we add the dynamics. It's very easy to put the interpretation before the foundation and that is a recipe frankly for uh, a really unstable and sometimes very anxious suddenly uh, that you think that everything is fine until you get to the pressured performance and suddenly those feelings of anxiety so can really surface so we have to preempt that by testing how thorough our learning is and whether it's a brand new piece or whether it's a piece that we've come back to I like to compare it a little bit with nature that if we we might plant a tree we might plant a beautiful shrub um, we don't then just walk away and leave it we have to keep on tending to it we keep on having to nurture it so that it remains healthy um, we're feeding it and in the same way um, whether it's feeding directly the piece or whether it's feeding elements of the piece, which we will put in our warm up, but I won't go down that because I think uh, many regular uh, people who've watched my, um, my webcasts know my feelings about um, warm ups and regular warm ups, which are so essential. So back to this piece, um, I was also testing whether I'd had the instructions of there's certain bars where I want to make sure that I've really counted um, and you can sort of see. So if I if you can see where I've marked, you can see where I put the yellow blobs. The yellow blobs are where I pin my eyes. So it's visual attention, which is incredibly important. And then if we go to this bar, um, always, I think, for a clarinet stroke sax doubler, um, always that left hand for me is needs anchoring. Am I thinking? the right thoughts, the right instruction to what I was playing or am I getting distracted or is my where I am looking out of sync with the fingering? These are constantly the questions that I am asking myself while I'm playing and that's what we have to do. There's so much. We are really multitasking in a very sophisticated way. We're listening. We're aware of the fingers. We're aware of where we're looking. Our five key senses, even the mouth, of course, um, all these senses. And which is the sense that has priority? And if there is a distraction, that's a key indicator that something isn't quite settled we then have to go back into it and problem solve. And that, in a sense, is what our training is. It is problem solving so that having resolved the problems, we replace the, the problems with the instruction. And when we have confidence in the instruction, like literally um, building, uh, building a, a piece of Lego or flat pack or anything, and I don't want to sort of uh, demote what we're learning here in music, but in a, men in a sense, it is about this. It has a similar kind of context that we are thinking about what thought instruction to action. And if there is a flow of what we need to think, the instruction that we have, that we have resolved any of the problems, that we have got uh, ways of perhaps highlighting certain high action uh, sections or a particular note, we have the resolution. We can counteract any doubt by the fact that we have a strong instruction. 
and that strong instruction will give us the confidence and the commitment, not only in the performance, but before we go into the performance. And that's also really important so that we go into the performance, whether it's a recording, uh, whether it's a lesson or whether it's a, a concert, that we go into the performance in a positive state of mind. And that's very much part of what we need to do as players, as performers, or even if we don't perform, that we do as players. Our attitude is essential in the whole learning training process. And that attitude will then carry through into the pressured situation, whatever that might be. So jumping back into the frame, that was actually, I will be straight and honest, that was the third time I played that movement. And what I had identified, although there were small little places, was that overall my main focus was on pulse. And it's so interesting that in the complexity of notes, we can be rather confused by getting too caught up in fingerings, in notes, but we can forget to hold on to the pulse and the pulse can be kind of assumed. So I reprioritized and actually I put pulse at the top of my, I reorganized and pulse was at the top of my priority list. And that gave me more stability. Obviously, of course, because that is, um, that goes without saying, but sometimes the most obvious is the least obvious when we're in the heat of the moment. Learning a new piece, but this time it is Theo Musgrave's Orfeo 4. It has a patch and that's what you're seeing behind me. And it is basically my clarinet, bass clarinet, B flat clarinet, um, and I think there's some E flat clarinet, has been twisted and reshaped to fit into this digital sound and there are four patch points. So the point of this in learning a new piece is of course listening. So listening is crucial. And for me, listening for this, we've got it sectioned into four points, which I trigger by pressing the next here over here. So I'm gonna play you a little bit. I'm still, even though I created, well, my team created but we created together these patches they are now fixed musical sounds which I then have to fit my live bit over the top and I have to remember and re there is certain amount of flexibility because that's how we've created it now and that's the wonderful thing about how things have developed digitally in the 21st century with what we've got available on this max patch um, and as I say, with the incredible creativity of my engineering uh, and editing team. So, but I have to almost relearn the piece, this particular movement. Orfeo cro crosses the river Styx. And so we're now in this extraordinary sound world. And I'll just play you a little bit of it. So what will happen if I'm performing it is I would have a pedal because I've been going to be recording it with my producer. I'm working from the computer, he will actually trigger each of the patches. So I'm just going to go in for a little bit and just give you a sound world of it. And in that, I am still having to learn myself 
uh, how to work with the patch. Oh, I've got a bit of a water. Let's do that again. The patch does go on. Um, it's late in the evening and I'm noticing that my hearing, my observation, my overall um, awareness is dulling. Um, but I'm still remembering and can check, recheck myself. There are critical points, if I show you the score, they're critical arrow points which indicate where I am. So self-reporting, I'm aware, it's late, I'm tired, I've been playing all day and my brain is getting, is getting weary. At this point, so close to the recording, I push myself to play every single piece that I will be recording every day now until I go into the studio on Tuesday. This to me is a very, very crucial part not only of always being with the pieces, but also that I am keeping that sense of contact with everything so that my attitude, my, my whole feeling uh, in myself, not only in the practical sense of the playing side, but actually in myself, that I feel I have had the contact with every piece. But there is work to do, as you could hear, um, I've got a very bubbly uh, E-flat clarinet, but it's a fantastic piece. This one is about listening. This is about working in a very, very different way to how we would work with a pianist or another instrumentalist or my percussion duo. Uh, fantastic piece. I'm really looking forward to recording this. Um, still more work to do. Uh, I'm not feeling dispirited, but I'm feeling, I know, the work that I need to do. So that is the end of a day of learning pieces. Um, they're all at various stages. You've seen a sample of what's been going on throughout the week. Um, I have a stand by the computer because that's the one that I play with Orfeo, with Jeffrey's piece um, and with in fact a piece that I'll be doing for Click Track. The instruments are now away. I have cleaned out the alto sax, but I leave that on the peg. Um, I have cleaned out the bass clarinet and my music is ready for the morning. I feel it's incredibly important that everything is tidied away. I've put my music in the order that I will be playing. So on the stand is the B flat clarinet. I've actually put the music also in order of priority. Uh, Chris Jolly's uh, new 
piece is uh, on the front because that's the newest piece uh, and that needs the greatest amount of work and I've categorized them all within the B flat section. Um, down here the next will be E flat clarinet is going to be the next um, chunk of music that I'll be doing then the bass clarinet and then the alto sax so ending the day tidily with a room ready for work tomorrow is for me incredibly important and as I move back to my desk uh, I also have the tasks that I need to do at my desk uh, including sending um, all the music to my producer so that's the way the day ends and I'm now going to have a very late dinner. <laughs>